After flushing is completed, the skin needs to be thoroughly washed. Raccoon skins tend to be very greasy, so after flushing, I thoroughly wash the skin with dish detergent and water. This removes any blood, dirt, and also cleans the fat off the fur so it will fluff up and look nice when the quiver is finished. The skin is vigorously washed on both sides before being thoroughly rinsed out. Don't worry, the soap I'm using here is biodegradable so it won't pollute the stream. All the excess water is then squeezed out of the skin. So I've got the skin cleaned and washed and fleshed. It looks really good too. And it's getting close to being able to be made into a quiver. Now large openings like the mouth here, I'm gonna to have to sew up and I'll do that later. Um, but whenever I make a quiver out of an animal skin like this, a raw skin, I prefer to essentially just clean it and then dry it as and make it into rawhide. I don't want to soft tan this thing because then it becomes way too floppy. It doesn't hold its shape and it doesn't hold the arrows well. Now we have two options with this quiver. We can either do it with the fur side out or we can do it, turn it inside out and just have the flesh side out. Now each way has its advantages and disadvantages and both were done uh, by Native American tribes. Now I like to do it with the fur side out because you get the nice added benefit of the camouflage, natural camouflage of the fur. However, because you are the arrows are up against the inside the raw hide essentially of the skin it's going to be a lot noisier to carry the arrows tend to rattle around inside or you can do it like i said inside out and have the fur side in you don't have the um you don't get the fur on the outside but you do have the fur on the inside which really pads and quiets the arrows and makes it a lot stealthier to carry around you also have the uh the ability to paint on the skin and you can paint all kinds of designs and I have seen that done in um, authentic Native American quivers so the option is up to you but first we're gonna get this thing um, cleaned up a little bit more and then I'm gonna sew the mouth shut and then we're gonna put this thing on the form and dry it using a leather punch I punch holes in the upper and lower lips then use a thin buckskin thong to tie the mouth shut I then pull the skin over a roll of chicken wire so it will dry into a tube shape. Now one important thing about a fur bearing animal is that you want to get that skin as dry as quickly as possible. So if the skin stays around as green and wet too long, um, the skin, the fur will begin to pull out and slip. So that's very important with any fur bearing animal, get it fleshed and clean and dry as quickly as possible. Once you dry it, it helps to set that hair and, and keep it from pulling out. Um, freezing of a skin is fine, but like I said, you don't want to leave it just wet and soft for too long. So this is how I get my, my skins to keep their form and stay into a, dry into a hollow tube that'll hold the arrows and it's with this round chicken wire form. Now the thing I like about this is it leaves it open on the inside so you can put a fan up against it and help blow that air in there and dry the skin out as quickly as possible. So that's what we're gonna do next. The high humidity in Georgia makes it difficult to dry a skin quickly, so I put the skin next to a dehumidifier in my basement. I place the skin so the dry output air blows inside the skin, helping to dry it quickly. I then left the skin overnight to thoroughly dry. The next morning the skin was totally dry and I removed the form. All that was needed to complete the quiver was a carrying strap. I again use a leather punch to make holes in the quiver near the opening and then tie the leather strap to it using thin buckskin thongs. The quiver is then placed on my back as it would be when in use and the strap is measured for correct length so the quiver will sit properly. Holes are then punched in the leather strap and slits are made in the quiver with a sharp stone flake. 
buckskin thong is again used, threaded through the holes and sewn to the bottom of the quiver. The quiver is then tried on. It fits perfectly. The quiver's finally finished, and boy, it looks good. And it performs really well, too. I hope this video inspires you guys to put in a little bit of effort, because you can make beautiful functional items out of things that would normally go to waste.